Thanks to Indeed for sponsoring the Apple Bits XL. Indeed knows hiring needs to be cost effective when you're running your own business. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash applebits. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. And thanks to ZocDoc for also supporting the Apple Bits XL. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com slash AppleBits and download the ZocDoc app to sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor. All right, everybody, let's get to the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. It's the AppleBits XL. Brian Tong here, your host, doing the most. For everything good and bad inside the world of Apple, what is up, everybody? It is episode 267. We're in mid-May. We're just a few weeks away from WWDC 23. This is episode 267, like I said. And hey, if you're new to the show, this is where we talk about all the biggest headlines and all the biggest stories and topics inside and outside the world of Apple, plus the greater tech world as a whole and this week's episode we're gonna do something fun because i had recently put out a survey on my twitter to my patreon and i had about close to 200 people respond to it about the apple headset because sure i have my own thoughts and ideas but what you really see is the proof is sometimes in the pudding when you get this out to the real world and see how people react to it so we're gonna dive into all of that with special guest and friend of the show g money Gil Cabrera, he's going to be here to talk all about it. But first, let's just hit a couple orders of business. I love getting calls from y'all. It's made it so fun. So hey, let's keep it rolling. If you want to be a part of the show and it adds so much to the flavor here, all you got to do is record a voice memo on your phone, on your laptop, on your tablet, any platform. Send it in to applebitsshow at gmail.com. That's applebits with a Z. Your name, where you're from, what you want to talk about, how you're feeling about WWDC, how you're feeling about the glasses, how you're feeling about the 15-inch MacBook Air, how about how are you feeling about anything? Call in, love to hear from you, applebitsshow at gmail.com. Also, this show is brought to you by you. Patreon.com slash Brian Tong is how you support my content. It's how you support this podcast. It starts at $2 per month. $5, which is like a cup of coffee. We got the 10 the 25 and the $100 Platinum Apple level. What do you get? Early access to my content, rewards at different levels, and a completely ad-free version of the show. No ads whatsoever. We have our Closure Rings Challenge going on right now for Amazon gift cards. We have our monthly Zoom live call, and I will announce the winner of the Steve Jobs book giveaway this week. So yeah, lots going on. We got a great community there patreon.com slash brian tong and thank you for your support all right so let's not mess around anymore let's talk this episode is all about your responses and all this data kind of put together into one nice tidy presentation with our friend gil cabrera all right all right we had to bring our resident expert guest in the house g money gil cabrera what's up gil What's up, BTZ? Good to be back. Oh, man. Always so fun to have you. And uh, from what I hear, you're like the new $6 million man, right? <laughs> I don't know if it's $6 million, but okay. I, I definitely have uh, bionic hardware in my neck now. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I, 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 I had some discs replaced for those wondering what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> people, like, people, like, Wait. people first heard the number $6 million, They're like, really? And I'm like, no, no, yeah, no. Like- he has bionic parts. Um, but it's, it's good to have you back here, Gil. So, you know, I think that we know WWDC is coming up, and obviously there's a lot of energy and intrigue around the Apple headset. And what we're going to do this in this episode is I put out a survey, and I asked uh, people on Twitter and on my Patreon to fill it out. And it's specifically about the Apple Mixed Reality headset because I have thoughts. You might hear some people's thoughts, but I think you really get the best general idea of where people's heads are at when you do something like this. So we're going to go one by one through some of these questions. But before we kick it off, Gil... What what are your first feelings just in general about this idea of an Apple headset as it stands today? So I like the concept of Apple getting into the space. I'm I'm concerned about some of the details we're hearing, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, like it's it's like not it doesn't feel quite ready for them to come into the space technically yet. 
Um, and then there's just the reality that I own two, three now, actually. I own three uh, virtual reality headsets. And I, you know, the first week or month that I had all of them, each of them, I used them. And then I really haven't used them much since. So I go back and forth on whether or not VR is there yet. Mm, mm, absolutely. Okay. So if you, how about this? A scale of one to 10, what are you, how are you feeling about the Apple headset? Just not even from a purchasing decision, but how are you feeling? about it right now i'm kind of mid i'm kind of in the middle there yeah. I'm like probably a five because yeah. again it's just like i'm hoping some of the reporting is wrong <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, but uh if it's all correct then i'm you know I, i'm less than mid i just i you know there's my gut says they wouldn't be pull, putting it out if they if, if it wasn't ready from an apple standard standpoint but uh, the reporting seems pretty consistent so right honest. right All right. So what this survey that I put out for people that aren't familiar with is I called it the Apple Reality Pro headset questionnaire. And I I put around maybe 10 questions or so in it. And so what we're going to do on this episode is talk about we're going to introduce each question, talk about the results and then kind of bounce back and forth, because I think there's some really interesting things and nuggets that came out of this. So the first question that I asked the audience and oh, just to let you know, we had 186 respondents close to 200. I think that's a pretty good sample size to get at least a general idea. Most of my audience is obviously tech savvy in general, whether you're a a consumer who likes tech a little bit or someone who likes tech a lot or someone who's going to buy every Apple product. And then we also have some people that are also kind of in that gaming tech space uh, overlap. So that's at least the general audience of these respondents to give you an idea. And the reality is it's probably a lot of people that are listening to the show that it resonates with you all. So I'm going to get to the first question, um, Gil. The first question we asked the audience, how interested are you in the Apple Mixed Reality headset? Now, 55.9% said with the largest response, moderately interested. We'll see what it does. That would that would kind of align with your mid feeling, right? I think that's what I voted. <laughs> <laughs> um, 29% said very interested. You absolutely have my attention. said not interested at all. And then we have 4% of the audience said, instant pre-order, I'm a diehard Apple fan. (laughs) (laughs) So there is an audience. There's absolutely an audience, uh, like a a little sliver. I I do think what's, what's a good sign for Apple is, you know, you might think some, because it's Apple, Everyone's going to be interested to a certain degree, but over half the audience was moderately interested, meaning they they at least have our attention, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it. I think it's it's about what you'd expect from a product nobody knows anything about, mm-hmm. that have, nobody's seen anything, but you still have a, a a group of people that, generally speaking, likes Apple products, right? I mean, that's it's kind of where I'm in. Anything they come out with is always going to take is always going to get. A, a pretty hard look from me mm-hmm. in terms of, am I going to need it? Do I want it? Uh, I never need it, but do I want it? Um, <laughs> and, and as we know, I can be an expert at justifying things for myself. So we'll see how that works out for me. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that we know where everyone is turned off about and it's the rumors of the $3,000 price point. So we'll, we'll get to that. But I, the next question we asked the audience is what three features for the headset would be the most important or compelling to you. Now, I gave a whole bunch of options, but I'm going to talk about the top three that rose to the top. And really, there's one that stands out the most. And at 64.7% of respondents said unique VR and augmented reality experiences. And they're looking for this headset to really give something different or offer something different that we haven't seen in the industry before. Then you have a clump of about four or five that are around the same response rate. But at number two, with 41% responding, gaming was the second uh, response for what three features of the headset are most important and compelling. And at number three, a high-fidelity 4K micro OLED display. This has been rumored to be, at least based on reports, the highest fidelity display that we could see in a, in a headset. And that would help differentiate them from a technology standpoint. Um, and then I'll just name two more to round out the top five. We have at 35.9% eye and hand gesture tracking. Now, there is a version of this that works with the Quest 2. Um, It's not to use, you know, it's not fully fleshed out with every app or experience, but it does do a certain level of hand tracking with some apps. But the big catch here with the Apple headset is that it's not expected to use any type of physical controllers at all. It'll all be 
hand gestures and eye tracking, at least from what we've been told. And then the next one at around 25 uh, and a half percent, really to that to that lineup or sorry, 27 percent, a new XR OS experience, a new Apple extended reality experience. And then we have FaceTime VR and prescription lens options as those next fields. I have put a bunch of different things up there, but the top three unique experiences, gaming and eye and hand gesture tracking. Do you, do you know what you put up uh, Gil or remember? I'm guessing I would have put up unique VR. Um, I don't think I would have put up gaming cause I just don't think Apple's known for gaming. Mm-hmm. So probably the high fidelity OLED. And then I don't know what else I put in there. Uh, <laughs> You're all feed me. Yeah. You're all feeds me, feeds me, feeds me yummy. Food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm always fascinated by the gaming thing, just because it, that's not that's never been Apple's thing. You know, it's it, it, you, they're not generally gaming laptops, and and I arcade is fun, but it's again, it's still not the primary reason you go to Apple. Um, but it's the primary reason people do VR so far. So maybe that's why people are thinking about it. But yeah, I think look, I'm I'm always looking for Apple's take on. On the on a on an experience that that already exists, right? They mm-hmm. usually punch it up punch it up on a level, um, and so that's why I think the sort of uniqueness of it has the potential. Um, I you know it's it's such a it's such an interesting thing. This the it w- it'll be so interesting to see how they approach it, right? Because if it's just another headset that you just put on, essentially in your house. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like, I mean, what's the difference there? It's just, you know, maybe it's a little sleeker looking, maybe the display is better, but I don't think it solves the ultimate problem with VR headsets generally, which is it's still a process to use. And, mm-hmm. and there's nothing compelling so far to keep you in the space. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, this headset, the original intentions were not even gaming focused, according to all the reports, right. all the early reports. And then I just threw in gaming because it is typically part of the experience. So what I found interesting is that later on reports have said, hey, Apple is going to pursue or try and lure developers to add gaming experiences when initially it wasn't. And that actually would align with what this survey shows that at least there's you know, a large group of people that are even considering anything AR VR that still want gaming, even if it's not necessarily Apple's bread and butter. So, yeah. And I, I mean, I think the original reports were really more on the AR side mm-hmm, generally, right. Mm-hmm. It was sort of almost like a, like a better Google glass, right. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at the, at the front end of it. And that's, that's a little bit more intriguing to me if it's something where directions or, uh, you know, the Holy grail of telling you who the hell you're talking to <laughs> you know, when, when you're, when you're in a when you're at a party, um, uh, or or giving you useful information about uh, locations or things like that, that's that starts getting interesting to me from a change of concept standpoint. But then you still have like the battery power problem you've got uh, and everything else. If you go and I don't know how you do a combo of those, mm-hmm. right? Like it feels like it should be one or the other, right? Because if it's a full view. AR experience, you you, you kind of have to mask out the outside world. If it's an AR experience, you don't. And, and how do you do something that does both? Yeah, in, I, a, in, a, in a functional way, right? It's it's interesting. In order for it to be compelling, I, I my feeling is that at least from a consumer standpoint, it has to focus more on these augmented reality experiences, and gaming can be a part of it. But right. that that's one of the big reasons of why it'll be different than any other thing out there from what we've seen so far. All the other headsets have really focused on gaming first more than anything else. Correct. And so if Apple's going to differentiate themselves, part of this has to be an augmented reality experience. I, I do think that it also shows in the result here, when everyone says unique VR and augmented reality experiences, I think everyone has kind of been tapped out and they're like, oh, we kind of really know what these devices have delivered to us over the past five plus years. And we need something new to really be compelled to even think about this again, right? And right. Yeah. Right. And so we've heard about yeah, Apple it, working with studios and maybe they deliver, you know, this really immersive um, experience with certain brands, you know, whether it's, you know, I th- we've talked about this in the past, Darth Vader Immortal, which was like a really cool experience, but it's not like you go and revisit that. And even if right. Apple has this killer, let's say they throw us in the middle of the Mandalorian's world and it's a augment, uh, it's a even a VR entertainment experience, 
that could be really cool and mind blowing. But if it's like a 10, 15 minute experience, I mean, how many times are we going to still do that? And how many times right. are studios going to produce content at that level that's going to keep us coming back? Right. And so the, so the, I do thought that on the AR gaming front, I mean, I think it would be more like a kind of a Yu Gi Oh! Go type of thing, right? Like some sort of thing where it's like you're mixing reality with the game. And that could be cool. Mm-hmm. And you could sort of see people running around the, you know, the streets playing these <laughs> stupid games with these Apple headsets. Uh, that you could see, um, that you could see something being compelling and different enough to where maybe it takes you another place. Again, the, at home experience is, I mean, you, you and I have the both the same ones, right? You've got a quest and you've got the VR, the yep. uh, PlayStation yep. VR one, the recent yep. one, right? Yep. I haven't turned on the PlayStation VR since I got it. Mm-hmm. I got it. I played that, the game that comes with it. It's like one the of the horizon, few games, the horizon, the, the horizon, horizon one, yep, yep, yep. which was, which was cool. Yep. But like, you know, 20 minutes or so, I was like, all right, this is the same thing. As everything else, and then that's it. And then my quests, I have two, two of them. Neither me nor my children have touched those in months. In fact, mm-hmm. when I did this survey, I was, I, it, it basically reminded me that I had them. And I <laughs> went outside, I went out to where they are and I plugged them in so that they would at least be charged in case I want to like try to give it a try. And I, my kids and I have talked about doing, um, a round of Among Us with them because mm-hmm, I think that, mm-hmm. that might be the one game that could be cool. Mm-hmm. So, you know, again, but that's still the same experience. It starts getting you in the right direction, but I still haven't used them. Have, have you ever tried to watch a movie on a, on VR, like with through the Netflix app or anything? Yeah, and I'll do it for like three minutes and stop because... Right? It's because, just not... Yeah. yeah, having a TV at home that's bigger and more comfortable is is a lot is a, still a better experience, right? Yeah. There's no weight on your least, head. Yeah, and at least on the quest, it's like, I mean, you're, <laughs> they put a screen inside the screen. So it's not <laughs> like it's all, it's not like an IMAX where it's all around you. It's, mm-hmm. you're just looking at a screen <laughs> yeah. inside your headset. It's like, this is stupid. <laughs> like, what is the point of this? Hey, so I'm, I don't, I'm in a theater. Uh, I'm in a virtual theater with you, Gil. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got, the last time I did it, you couldn't. You weren't even next to anybody else, so sure. I, so I'm not even sure it solves for that. Like, you know, if maybe if you were, although you'd be there with an avatar. Like, it's, I don't know. Everything about it just doesn't make sense to me. So I, I think it's, I think they have to come at it from an AR perspective for it to really be compelling. I think that's where I am. Yeah, me so. too. Okay, next question we asked, what is the highest price point you'd actually pay for an Apple headset knowing what we've heard? So I put up four different price points. I put up 500 plus. One thousand to fifteen hundred, two thousand to twenty five hundred, and three thousand to thirty five hundred. Those were the price options I gave. At number one, the number one respondent said the one thousand to one thousand five hundred dollar price point was a sweet spot at fifty one point six percent. At number two, five hundred plus dollars at twenty eight percent, not happening. Uh, at number three, fifteen percent said two thousand to twenty five hundred, and then yes. At 4.9%, the last response, $3,000 to $3,500. And here's the, fun, here's the fun fact, okay? Now, the first question I said is in this survey was, how interested are you in Apple Mixed Reality headset? Remember, eight respondents said, instant pre-order, I'm a diehard fan. Well, that shows at least a certain level of consistency here where at least nine people said 3000 to 3500 They would totally pay for it, right? So at least <laughs> the instant pre-order people are, did yeah they're like yeah whatever the price is I don't care but um you know the audience here sweet spot 1000 to 1500 now the fact that that's the sweet spot would tell me that at the lowest Apple would go is 2000 just because Apple's going to say hey look at the day that we have everyone's down to pay 1000 to 1500 we're going to make it Apple $2000 but we know the rumors say $3000 and that's 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 a non-starter for uh, ninety eight percent of the user base, even ninety nine percent actually. Yeah, I, so it's interesting. I, I I guess when I answered this, I looked at it a little differently. I I didn't look at one thousand to fifteen hundred as the sweet spot so much as the most. Mm, mm. Yeah, oh like, yeah, the I most could, that you pay for. I, yeah, yeah. So I could stretch to. I could see myself stretch again, justifying. Yes, I could see myself yeah. stretching slash justifying up to a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks. But that would be it. I mean, I just, uh, you know, y'all, you, nine people that did three to 3,500 must be nice to have that kind of money to I burn. Mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's pretty and, and, wild. And, and we all know I burn a lot of money, but geez, that's a lot of money to burn. 
Hey, so I was like, wow. Gil, you know, you justify a lot of your purchases by handing down previous models to the kids, the <laughs> wife, it all blows down. You can't hand down three Quest PSVR 2s and be like, yeah, I'm still going to drop 3,000 bucks <laughs> after I do that. Right. No, that's just not happening. And, you're, and you know what? You're right. The question was actually, what is the highest price point you'd actually pay? So thanks for correcting me. But at least here in the results, the sweet spot of how, what's the highest people would pay? Would be a thousand to fifteen hundred in. I think that makes sense, even when you look at everything that's on the market. Um, Oculus put out their professional level uh, headset, the MetaQuest Pro, and it started, I think, around twelve ninety nine or thirteen hundred, and that thing has not done anything. I mean, th- that thing is honestly yeah. pretty much not even f- flopped, like super flopped. Even if they're trying to cater it to a different audience, a little slimmer, the visuals are pretty much the same, a little lighter, but that didn't appeal to anyone who had owned a previous headset because to your point they're hanging on the corner you haven't used them in months and why are you going to throw that much money at something that you already haven't used kind of the their the proof their most successful headset that much right it would have to be i mean it would have to be ready player one level Mm. capability to even come close to justifying right three grand i mean and we're nowhere near that nope (laughs) you know and I know I, Apple can innovate, but there's no way they're going to roll up with <laughs> Oasis, you know, plus you know an entire world, and and a headset that that looks like a ski goggle essentially that's comfortable and light and not, not a big deal. That's just not realistic. So I don't know how they think they're going to get three grand. I don't know for this stuff. I just I, even if you look at it like, well, maybe. Is there a business market? No, there's not even a business market for it. Like, what is the market? And uh, yeah, yeah, it just. I mean, they don't and they don't have a product. I mean, is there a comparable product that is so? Out, I mean, the pros, I guess, the Mac Pros, right? But I'm trying to think of a, a comparable product that's so out, outlandishly mm. priced. Those mm. screens they have, right? They yeah. have that crazy screen, yeah. but that, that's all professional case stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like, and there's and there, that's just not a thing you're going to get VR, AR to do you know what business is going to say we should buy all these vr (laughs) all right let's take a moment to thank our sponsor indeed what's a game where no one wins the waiting game so when it comes to hiring don't wait for great talent to find you find them first with indeed when you're hiring you need indeed Indeed makes hiring in one place so easy, even right from the main page. You type in the type of jobs you're looking for in the search bar, and a list instantly shows up for jobs in your area. Now let's talk about Indeed's hiring platform that is second to none. Candidates you invite to apply are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to U.S. Indeed data. It gets you one step closer to the hire by immediately matching you with quality candidates. Indeed does the hard work for you. Indeed shows you candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your description immediately after you post so you can hire faster. And Indeed's hiring platform matches you with quality candidates instantly. Even better, Indeed's the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements. Indeed is an unbelievably powerful hiring platform, delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to TalentNest in 2019. So join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash AppleBits. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash AppleBits. Indeed.com slash AppleBits. Terms and conditions apply. Need a hire? You need Indeed. And thanks again to ZocDoc for also sponsoring this podcast. Hey, let's say you're trying to find a cause for your symptoms, an achy back, you got a sore throat, and you stumble down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts. You know there are better ways to get the answers you want and the care you deserve from trusted professionals and not some random people on the internet. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. Zodac is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Surprise twists might work for some podcasts, but maybe not for medical care. With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. 
Choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. Go to ZocDoc.com slash AppleBits and download the ZocDoc app for free, then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That is Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash AppleBits, ZocDoc.com slash AppleBits. So highest price point, you'd actually pay the sweet spot, at least for the survey, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. And I, I'm I align with that. Uh, there's no way they're going to make this five hundred dollars plus. Let's be real. But uh, right. <laughs> it's going to at least hit yeah. that uh, four figure number. OK, the next question. What's your biggest concern about the Apple Reality Pro? I, I came up with four responses. Uh, how comfortable it will be? What apps will I actually use? How long will the battery last and how much it costs? The number one response at 48% was your biggest concern about the Apple Reality Pro, how much it costs. I, I think everyone is talking about that. At 30%, the second response is, what apps will I actually use? Right. At number three, how comfortable it will be. So people are actually kind of you know, willing to say, oh, it may not have to be the most comfortable for me to really buy in on this. And then at the last response, 8.6%, how long will the battery last? So you know, like we're all thinking, we're consumers, how much it costs and what apps will I actually use speak exactly to what we really just talked about. And the fact that with a lot of our heads, it's just kind of sitting there. It hasn't, there still hasn't been there. I haven't seen anything that is sticky enough for me to keep on coming back. Even playing with my nephew, we played mini golf for a while. Uh, we played, what else? That was the game we played. And we would play like once a week for about a month. And then we just stopped and then we never got back to it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think there's a ton of these headsets just sitting around doing nothing. I think, I, I mean, I, I, I'll, I bet you the daily use of those is, is terrible. Um, and, and I got, you know, I got teenagers, so teenage girls, so they, they're, they're, they're least, less likely, I guess, but still, they were into it when we first got them, and then they've just never seen them since. Even when their friends come over, they don't turn them on. Right? That's actually probably you know, a good so, thing. <laughs> well, know? no, for sure. Well, I don't know. They, they, you know, they're already on their phones, so I don't think it's Oh, that's true. So, you know, the battery thing raises a, <laughs> raises a fun question uh, or a fun discussion, which you and I were having previously, which is the tether. Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? Really? So for people that aren't that are listening and may not be familiar with what's the reports are, the reports are that this headset will have a backpack slash not backpack, a battery pack like connection with a physical cable that you would attached to your hip to provide power for the headset it is a tether it's a it's a dongle let's get ready to do it's a, yeah, i'm not gonna say that right now. you're on the it's, phone it's, line it's, I feel a, bad. It's, a, it's a dong it's a dongle on the on your belt <laughs> i mean that's kind of what i'm seeing it it's like a, this is something you and i were talking about uh sort of as we were preparing ain't no way sj <laughs> would have ever allowed uh, uh, anything that had like a belt pack <laughs> ever <laughs> from Apple ever with a cord, uh, he would have been like, "Are you out your damn mind?" <laughs> like to whoever the engineer was, it's like, "Well, we can't get any more battery power." Yes, you can. Just do that. Well, but we can't. Yes, you can. Just do that. <laughs> like that's what it would have been. And, it, he, and he would have he would have tortured his engineers until they figured it out. It. I mean, those are all the reports. My my hope is maybe there's a minimum of maybe one hour of battery life internally, but I all from the very early on Mark Gurman from Bloomberg, who's really dropped most of the details here said it would be a tethered battery. And everyone's like, what? And he yeah. hasn't, he hasn't um st stood down from that stance. And so I just don't, I, I, I'll have to see an experience. He talked about fitness experiences, I've used the Oculus Quest to use Supernatural, which is like a boxing fitness app. It's actually really cool. The headset is a little heavier, um, but there you're not tethered. You don't feel any sort of cord hitting your head, and so yeah. <laughs> I mean, even even the cord connection on the on the VR the PSVR two is 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 annoying. You feel it. You feel it. You feel you feel it. I mean, because you're. I mean, the whole point is you're walking around, and every once in a while you just trip up on it, um, and it's just it's just. A, I, that's where I thought Quest got it right. Yeah, you know, make it make it a, a complete package and just have it on your head. It weighs a ton, and your head starts hurting. But you know, whatever. Although I think I feel like the 
the VR two is heavier than the Quest one. It's, it's such a huge. It, it's certainly bigger. It. I mean, I don't. I can't remember off the top, but I just put on the Quest, uh, the Quest two maybe a week ago, and I surprised was like, oh, this is heavier than I remember. And so, if part of the whole battery pack thing, as weird as it'll look, and as anti SJ as it is philosophically, even Johnny Ive would have been like throwing up. He would have been like, I'm leaving. Maybe that's yeah. what got him to leave. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a dongle battery pack. Hell no. He left. Yeah. He just walked yeah. out of the building. But uh, yeah, that I we'll see. We'll see. If, okay. it, yeah, if, it ta- if it takes out the weight, I mean, it is an interesting concept, right? Like right? You, you put this on your belt and the thing is, is you know, 100, 100 grams right? as, opposed to four, as opposed to 400 grams or whatever. So there's yeah, value. Maybe. There is some value in that depending on how – how much we really feel that cable. Okay. Yeah. Um, a next question really quickly. Do you own any kind of VR headset where I wanted to pull the audience? Again, 185 or 186 responses. 61% of the respondents own some kind of VR headset. And then when we did a breakdown, clearly... No, no, the- no. no. Six, uh, 30, 39% own. Oh, sorry. Headset. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah, duh. I was like, that is high. 38.9% said yes, and then 61 61- 0.1% said no. Right now, thank you, Gil. I knew I had you here for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty – That's that, I was impressed with that penetration. I mean, that's that's a pretty good – you know, upwards of a third had that actually have it. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> wow. I, I I don't think I, – I had to smile when I heard you say that. <laughs> you are such a 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just impressed. So, <laughs> so basically, what, 40% of the audience, at least this tech-centric – slash gaming crossover audience has a headset that is pretty impressive right yeah no i, I mean that's uh, what's the what's the what's how much of a of the broader market has it maybe five oh. percent maybe 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 yeah. yeah of the general how about yeah i don't know maybe 10 yeah, well, maybe 10 no no five. way of the general general public now like five or less of the general public Ooh. maybe of the maybe of gamer gamers it's closer to yeah, this yeah. number but yeah You'd have to be a hardcore gamer for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, then we wanted to find out at least which headset that you own, and it aligns with all reports that we've heard. The number one headset. Now, of these 185 responses, 75 people did respond with which headset they actually own. And so we have 54% of that group was the MetaQuest 2, the most popular by far. Then it drops all the way down to 24% of that group, PlayStation VR. Then we have... a uh, really pretty much close neck and neck the original meta quest and the new psvr2 at 17 and 18 percent after that you have smaller really small numbers like just one or two or three of the htc vive uh the vive xr elite the valve index uh, you have people that had the original oculus rift a couple of those but for the most part everything exploded with that meta quest 2 like and it was Two ninety nine at one point. I think now they bumped up the price to three ninety nine, which made total sense for people just to give it a try. That were curious, so yeah. it, it all lines up. Yeah, no, and, and, and like I said, those are. I think those make the most sense because they're they're self contained. And you know, it's it's interesting. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, the the battery pack thing, not that you factor in weight, and you're you're not going to feel the cord right because it's, it's not like you're going to bump up against it. It's just going to mm-hmm. go somewhere else on your mm-hmm. body. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's a a better experience than than we think it would be. But, At least for uh, now, right? I mean, right now in the current state of headsets, if they're trying to differentiate themselves, if it's really really light and yeah. it and it's something that you and I could say, "Hey, I could actually wear this for 2 hours cuz I'll tell you, I take off a headset after 20 30 minutes tops. I'm just totally, like, I'm good. Totally. I'm done." So even though it may not be the ultimate sleekest solution right now, that does solve an issue of wearing these headsets for longer. Yeah, no, that I mean, that's and that's one of the biggest things for sure. I mean, your neck just starts. It's a combo of the pressure on your face and your neck. Yeah, that yeah. sort of starts getting to you at some point. So yeah, no, it's an interesting. Uh, but yeah, I, I love that. I, I, I we should have asked, actually did. Oh, you did. The next question is the one I was. I was like, you know, we should have asked them how often they use it. I, I, <laughs> look at look at this. Look at how good this survey is. It your <laughs> you, mind. you you really thought ahead. I did. I did. <laughs> all right. So the next question we have after all these people who own a headset, how often do you use your headset? I had different durations: every day, two to three times per week, once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, and then I haven't used it in over a month. And the number one response of people who own a VR headset was at 48.9%. 
I haven't used it in over a month. And that's a that that's a really strong indicator of how much how how much use and how successful these are these devices are, which is not very after that initial purchase. Yeah, and these are gonna be the most hardcore of users. I mean, yes. you know, these are these are early adopters, these are the folks that are sort of out front that would tend to do it like you and I. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and 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 exactly I mean that's exactly what I, I hit, right? It it's been Brian, I'm sure it's been well over six months. For me, I, yeah, same here. I yeah. was at least three or four months when I made the survey and I wrote this. I'm like, oh, I haven't used it in at least three or four months. Yeah, yeah, you know, which, is, which is yeah, which is crazy. Um, the other responses, which were tied at 13 percent each, we had people that said they used it once a month, people that said they used it two to three times per week, um, and then around the 10 and 9 percent, we had once every two weeks. Once a week was at 9.8% of the basically 92 responses that have a VR headset. There were four people that said they use their VR headset every day. It was the lowest response out of the entire thing. I don't even know what I would do every day on a headset unless it was unless I was it was my main fitness thing. I I don't every day, Gil. I, I mean, the the only time I used it every day was like the first three days I owned it. <laughs> <laughs> so like if, if they just got it two days before it was set, then that would track. But I mean, even when it was brand new, I didn't use it every day. Like, That's true. And that was me showing everybody. And that was also me like inviting people over and saying, oh, you got to try this. This is cool. Mm-hmm, and, putting Vader mm-hmm. in, and putting Vader in front of them, you know? Yep. Um, but that's, yeah, that's crazy. That that can't be real. <laughs> okay. Um, what stops you from using your headset more regularly? I had a ton of responses. Um, I did put in a few just because I wanted to get people started. But um, we had things from, you know, there are other forms of media that distract me. I just got bored with it. Some people said, ah, I don't own one. Um, the games and experiences don't have enough stickiness. So this was a pretty, in generally, a little more evenly spread results. At 29.5%, we had there are other forms of media and entertainment that I prioritize. At 19.3%, the games and experiences don't have me coming back for more. At 15.9%, I just got bored with it. And then 14.8%, I can only be in VR for a limited time until I get motion sickness. You had a lot of other smaller, like kind of single responses because I wanted to hear from people. Some said awkward living conditions, uh, right? Not enough space being busy with work. <laughs> One person kept it real. I have an eight-month-old daughter. It's hard. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's... That'll cool. do it. Right. Yeah, that'll do it. Because um, yeah. your spouse is going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. Um, people said screen sucks, time. All right, so what, what for trying... you, what stopped you the most from using your headset more regularly? It, it's funny. I'm trying to remember what it was that I... Why it was I did it. I... I it's I must have done either, which are kind of the same, is other forms of media and entertainment that I prioritize, or the games and experiences mm-hmm. don't have me coming back for more, right? I think those are two sides of the same coin. For sure. Um, and so I think, I'm trying to remember what I did, but I think it's one of those two. I'm guessing I would have said that the experiences aren't having me come back for more. Because yeah. the reality is, if it was compelling, I I would make time um to do it, but um, I'm also not as I'm. I'm also just generally not that big of a gamer, right? I have mm-hmm. all the all the modern current um, uh, consoles, but I, you know, I'll 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 not touch them for months, and then have a day where I just play, and then just not touch them for months. You you make a good point about it's kind of those two working in combination with each other because you might say, oh, if the games are really that great, I would be coming back all the time, and then at the same time, you know, I think about. I'm watching Netflix. I'm watching HBO Max. I'm watching sports. Um, it's hard for, and I just sit down and I don't have to put on a headset and, you know, have this extra weight. And I, I, I think it, it, they do kind of play off each other. But one of the, it makes me think of that one of the challenges with just gaming in general on VR is that all these companies have so many of the resources at other things, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, you know, look at how people haven't, even developers haven't prioritized Apple as a gaming platform because they only have so many budgets. So then when you come to VR, again, these studios, sure, they have a VR budget, but a lot of times, many of these games are, if they're music games, 
they're fun, but I don't play the same music game every day. They are really fun. Um, there, there's just not enough there where I'm not. I haven't seen a game where I said, "Hey, I'm gonna get into a 30 hour God of War type game on VR." There's never been a game like that. Right. Right. Well, and I, I, I mean, a big thing for me is like there almost almost always enough time has gone by where when I pick it up, two things are 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 in play. One is it's dead. Right. <laughs> True. So, True. so a they need to have it in a, in a perpetual state of charge with a stand or something, and two almost always needs an update. Right. Mm. So like, I'll, mm. so I'll 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 want to play. I'll grab it. There's no charge, and then I just walk away. Then I plugged it in. So the next time I grab it and there's a charge, I've got to stop because it needs an update. I mean, that, those are because that's how often I now use them, right? And so that those two little pieces do actually <laughs> that little resistance kills any effort I would make to actually use them, <laughs> which great, is great sad. Point. But that's but that's the reality of, of the way they work. Um, is that you don't you don't they're not just like like a watch sitting on a stand where you just grab it and it's fully charged right I mean that's one of those th- and and at least the quest uh, PS the VR two doesn't have that problem but the quest and the the quests do and they mm-hmm. and there's and they don't really have they're not set up to be sort of put on a stand you have to like just remember to plug them in when you put them away and then just leave them plugged in the whole time I guess which I don't I'm not sure if that's good for them or not I think that's a great point you make though just the resistance of is this thing going to work when I turn it on? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't. It's so true. Every t- you made me think about it. Every time I've come back, I mean, even when I just put on the uh, Quest 2 recently because I'm like, oh, I'm going to jump in again because I just ha- – the, literally the only reason I put it on is because I was inspired by this survey. And I'm like, oh, I haven't put it on for three or four months. And I had to do a software update. And then I was like, <laughs> totally. all right, left in the corner. <laughs> I like totally. didn't touch it for the day. And then I came back the next day. I'm like, all right, I'll put it on. And it was like – it's so true. It's so yeah. true. Well, oh no, I, I literally when I did I did the same thing when I did the survey because we I have them all of our board games and stuff. This is kind of hilarious, but all of our board games are in the, the you know the girl cave thing. I have mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. the little hangout room I have in our in our garage, and I at some point in organizing you know my office and my house and everything, we put the 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 VRs on that stand, so it's next to all the board games, ironically. Mm. And so I have to go to the other side of the yard. I got to go plug it in. I got to go through all – and all those things, I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to – let me just turn on some YouTube and watch some YouTube. Right. Oh, my gosh. We even didn't talk about that. Yeah, just YouTube as a distraction. It's like there's, yeah. so, many, there's so many things to – Dude, to dude I, have, I have a console. I have, I have a PS4. I have two PS4s and two Xbox uh, Ones in each uh, place uh, – both in the in the girl cave and in our living room, uh-huh. and I still don't use either of them. And they're as easy for me to get to as possible, <laughs> depending on where I am. And I still don't use them. So I mean, it kind of gives you a sense of my 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 gamer uh, uh-huh. lack of you know instinct there. All right, last question here: What will define the Apple headset as a success to you? We had different responses. I I, I created kind of these preset ones, but. They range anywhere from they convinced me to buy the first gen headset. Um, people are talking about it. It shows me how Apple's thinking and how they see the future. Overall sales numbers, that's all that matters. Or it won't be a success. So the number one response of what will define the Apple headset as a success to you, I think people are pretty optimistic and kind here, but they all, the large majority, 46.6% said, it shows me how Apple is thinking and how they see the future. I thought that was pretty interesting because you know how like, I maybe it's because I'm around it enough. But tech responses tend to be very skeptical, very mean, very like, what what can you do for me lately? And I did find it surprising that this audience in general is like, they just need to at least show me something. Um, yeah. And, and I, then they may not buy the first one, but and I agree with this type of thinking. I We may not buy that first one, but maybe it gives us a hint of at least where they see this space moving and five, 10 years down the road when it's really ready and the tech is slimmed down and the battery life is better and the form factors are better. That's when we really see all the fruits of the labor that start um, this year. The, you know, oh, you're going to say something. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, that's the, the thing with first gen Apple stuff generally is usually it's the second or third one. That's, that's really, that when it hits its stride. So yeah, I, I'm not even sure, even if it was within the zone, I'd get it in the first gen because I know they. I'll know they're going to update it in a few in a few years. 
Um, but I think I put down they've con- they've convinced me to buy the first gen headset. Yeah. I think that's that's what I thought would be success. Because again, we're we're the early adopters. We're the ones that you would expect to buy this stuff. And if you haven't, if you if you if you can't sell it to us, right? I'm not sure who you sell it to. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, to your point, the number two response at 20.1 percent was they've convinced me to buy the first gen headset. Then we had tied at 11.5 percent. Two options. <laughs> the skeptics out there, it won't be a success. And then the 11.5 percent. The other one was everyone is talking about. It. I think that is important. The buzz of, yeah. you know, I think mainstream news will talk about it. But how will general consumers or even the tech space will they say it's great, but it's too expensive? I think that that's honestly a win. And then overall sales numbers came in at 10.3 percent. That's all that matters. I mean, do they even – are we even going to know what the sales numbers are? Because they, they don't generally release no. that, right? The, uh, Apple stopped doing that I think for at least maybe two or three years now. So it, it's – you know, we're going to see those reports of <laughs> Apple has shipped like 500 VR units globally or something. <laughs> 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 right. they, they, they've shipped units, but we won't know how many have sold. I really feel like when I think about the overall landscape, yes – journalists and media outlets will get them we'll have that small percent of whatever those four out of the one or those eight out of the 185 people that will uh absolutely buy it and then i think it's gonna be one of those things that a lot of content creators are gonna just get for the clout and for the you're right to be it's an it's the newest apple product they're gonna bombard it with as much content as they can and don't get me wrong i'm one of those people but i i Seeing how people responded to Apple headset content, I don't, I, I don't know. I think there'll be a really genuine curiosity in the beginning, but I don't know about long tail at least or out of the gates. Unless again, we have to see what they tell us. They might blow our I, minds. They might blow our minds. Honestly, you never know. I, I mean, I think that I think the big thing will be: Does BT mm. keep it? Keep mm. it? Does he keep it? Right? Because you know you got to order it to review it. Mm. But are you gonna mm. keep it? Mm. That's the question. I mean, that's a bit. I. <laughs> How about, the, how about this? As we stand right now, I'm probably gonna say no, right? Like I'll re- as as we sit here today, a sensible person, which I tend to be, would say, yeah, I'll review it. But am I gonna keep a three thousand dollar plus headset that there's no way I'm gonna be even using this thing once a week after that first month? You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, I'll. I'm. There's gonna be a lot of people that are excited to have it and use it a bunch. But we got to talk about this thing after month one. We talk a six month review or even a three month review is probably a lot more compelling than the first week I got it review. Right, but then you have to keep it. <laughs> That's a lot of coin, baby. I'll know what's I'll, a, what's Apple's return policy. <laughs> I'll I'll know if I keep keep it. You know, I'll I'll know right out of the gates after that initial review. I'll be able to tell you. Um, here, yeah. let me let me give you something to chew on. Not that it may, may or may not matter. There were some reports um, that some people had seen have already seen this Apple headset ahead of time, and I don't know if you remember the name rings a bell. Palmer Lucky, he's mm-hmm. like the godfather of modern VR. He was the one who invented and created the Oculus VR, and and then Meta ended up buying it. But he was. Do you remember there was like this time cover of a guy kind of yep. floating in air with the goggles? Right. This is Palmer yep. Lucky. So he tweeted just a couple days ago. This is all he put out, and it got people buzzing a little bit. He wrote, just plain, simple, short sentence, the Apple headset is so good. Oh, man. <laughs> so I love your reaction because that it, that itself is kind of intriguing, right? Yeah, it really is, actually. Right? That's kind of – I mean, it's, it is – <laughs> It's such a troll too, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. It's like it's like. Listen, I'm going to give you buzz, so I'm going to need a little bit of wiggle room on the NDA. <laughs> so that I can, and here and here's what I'm going to tweet. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and buy some stock ahead of that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, but it, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's 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 interesting. Um, I, I yeah, I just don't think it's I I, I cannot. God bless them if they pull it off, but I cannot believe we're talking iPhone, first iPhone level quantum leap in no way, innovation. No way. I just don't think it's there. Uh, that That's just the reality. But you know? I, th- I think they can get to, uh, and let's not say first gen Apple, like, you know, break the paradigm, like game changer, all that stuff. But I think they can actually get the space a whole lot better if it, A, really the visuals 
are that clean and clear that we're like, holy crap, this does, this is the best, right? If, if these are the three takeaways, you always think about what are the three takeaways when you have a product come out. If the three takeaways from this are, this is the best image I've ever seen in a VR headset, right? The tech geek space will be like, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. This is the lightest and most comfortable headset I've ever felt. That at least is those people that are have always used VR and like, oh, I, I hate putting this on. It's just not comfortable. That uh, solves that problem. And then the third thing is if they show us an experience that we've never seen before that really does, quote unquote, blow minds, even if it's just one experience just for the launch, that creates an energy and buzz around it that it's not a flop, at least from a standpoint of this thing is really cool. I may not spend $3,000 for it, but this thing is really cool, and I am aligned with what Apple is trying to do moving forward if we pretend to extrapolate this five, ten years ago. I think that would be the success. Yeah, I, I think that tracks. I think I was, it's funny. I was just looking at, at, the, uh, at, the, at the Lucky Palmer thing, and the insane thing to me is that you know, he, he notes in his, in his feed that it's 10 years, like, a, like it, it hasn't mm-hmm. been that long since Oculus has been around, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And when you think about it in those in that context, and the fact that you had a huge company like Meta with really endless resources mm-hmm. to to trick it out, and we're still only where we are with the Quest, mm-hmm. that's a decade of iteration that should I I would think would have given you something better. Now Meta's not a hardware company, so maybe that that explains it, and Apple can iterate a little bit better and faster, but it's still troubling to me that we're we're 10 years in on this tech and it's still not quite where it needs to be i mean when you give it that perspective i think the biggest change that's happened in those 10 years is it going from a tethered pc experience to a a true wireless experience like that that's the evolution that we've really seen in those 10 years right yeah yeah um and and eye tracking has started coming into play uh with sony psvr2 and things like that but the those are those you know that's a limitation of maybe hardware resources and equipment and also you know back in the day remember you had to mount like tracking cameras for some of these uh vr headsets with a pc in your room on sticks so (laughs) so we're past that now we're at least have more freedom to move and maybe it comes down to okay now we have freedom to move how about the comfort how about the fidelity and then what are these experiences um that that move us i i think it'll be interesting to see will we make a bigger jump in 10 years than we have in the first 10 years. I don't know. Right. Man, one would hope, man, one would hope. Consumer demand, <laughs> consumer demand is going to have to drive that as well. Right. Right. Yeah. But the problem is it's, it's, it, it is a chicken and egg problem in this particular space because you have to have such a compelling product to drive consumer demand. And you can't get to that without the consumer demand, unless you're willing to just throw money at it. And I, I, I just don't, you know, I, I mean, look, these companies are throwing decent resources at it all, but, um, you know, is it going to be enough? And the hope is a, a hardware integration company like Apple can pull it off more than any company that's tried to so far. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, and, and they're, they're, they are a wearable device company. That's what they've been doing for a while. So you'd think they'd have a leg up on it, but we'll see. We'll see. So, Gil, uh, if it's two thousand, will you get it? If it's one thousand five hundred tops, will you get it? Where do you stand right now after we talk about all this? I think if it's a grand, I'll think about it. If it's over a grand, it starts getting very hard for me to. <laughs> to I, I, it, it wouldn't be a day of day of uh, order availability me putting in my order it would be a let me see what let me see what you think of it that type of thing if it's you know that that's probably going to be what it is regardless and that's just a matter of how how high it gets all right so you know this was really fun first of all we got to thank so many people for responding to this uh survey because without you i mean you really did kind of reinforce a lot of things that i've been thinking but also kind of show me uh, a few new perspectives which is really cool um gil thank you for filling out the survey yourself man my pleasure. And let me let me just say, because I, I don't think you would ever say this, but I, I wanted to thank folks on your behalf for the great comments that they also put in at oh, the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. They were very nice. Very nice. Got a lot of love. My dog is even interested in them, if you can hear them in the background. And uh, and you, you have a great audience, so I just wanted to let them know that that, that is very appreciated. Oh man, they, you know, that that that's kind of you to say that, Gil. I mean, you're part you're part of the community. You're part of the fam, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mine was the comment about porn, but let's put that aside. 
<laughs> I did see that comment actually. I actually <laughs> saw that comment. I know. I just saw it when I was looking through them. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and when you when you ask for open ended comments, you you get what you ask for. That that's how it is. So, um, everybody remember as as we sign off here, WWDC June fifth. That's when we're expected to have Apple do their official announcement. That's less than a month away. Uh, Apple has not sent formal media invites yet. I hope I'm there. I, I think this is one of those events where you the the buzz will be generated by the people who experience this. You can't put specs on a sheet on it. You got to have people try this for the first time. And people that have quite honestly used other headsets is going to make a big difference in how they perceive this. I am one of those people, Apple. So if you're listening... You know, holler on over. And and Gil, I'm sure, you know, if he's free and I needed a cameraman, Gil would be like, Yeah, Brian, get me in on this, man. See, now you're now you're giving away all of the inside begging that I do. Like, please, Brian, let me be your let me be your assistant. I'll carry your cameras. I'm happy to do it, man. That's that's the thing. I, I haven't I haven't been to the Apple campus. I wanna see it. <laughs> Dude, you'll you'll freak out because I freaked out the first time I was there. I was like, damn, this thing's impressive. Like there's it's a different buzz. It's a different energy. So, Gil, thanks so much for doing this, man. Thanks for being on the show again. Always appreciate it so much. It's so fun to just chop it up. My pleasure. Always fun to talk about uh, everything we usually text about. So it's all it's all fun. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna let you get to your dog because clearly they want the doggy wants some attention. The dog has had enough. Enough. We're good. All right, Gil, all right. talk to you soon. All right, see ya. All right, bye. <laughs> Hey, you can't always leave it to the humans to end up knowing when to stop the show. Sometimes the humans, you got to let the dogs do it. You got to let the dogs decide. So that was fun. Thanks so much, Gil. And hopefully you all, you all had fun kind of listening to what you as a community thought. 185 responses, um, pretty impressive. And again, the Apple headset, there is a lot of intrigue and there's a lot of hesitance and we just won't know until we know and Apple has to show us what they're going to show us. And then we will decide where we stand. All right, before we go, we got to give big thanks to our Platinum Apples at the $100 level at patreon.com slash Brian Tong, Brandon Ledford, Gil Cabrera, Wesley Frader, Jarrett Lewis, Michael Gigliotti, Atari Koenigsegg, and Glenn Canellis. Thank you for your continued amazing support, all of you. And thank you for everyone at every level who keeps on doing it. And remember... If you're listening right now and you haven't reviewed or given us a five-star review on the podcast app from Apple, hey, we have a 4.9 star review with over 1.3 or 1,300 views. That's pretty freaking stellar and you all make it happen. So thanks for your support and we're going to keep on going on, going on. All right, a few weeks away. You know how we do it. We'll be back here. Same bad time, same bad channel. It's the Apple Bits XL, baby. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Peace.